Hi everyone, welcome to another River Valley Scrub Hub tutorial. This one is all about the envelope style filter masks and how we make those. Before we get started, there's something that you need. If you haven't done your preparation at home, you do need to have with you the filter mask template. If you haven't got that, you need to stop watching now, head over to the Patches and Buttons YouTube channel and find the very short tutorial that explains how you make this from a cereal packet. Okay, if you've got that, then carry on, we're good to go. So we're going to be making, as I said, the envelope style filter masks, and this is how they look when they're completed. We're using a different type of pleat to the one that we've used on the previous masks. This is a box pleat. It expands to cover the nose and the chin, and it has a little extra support, a pipe cleaner, which should help it adhere to the bridge of the nose. We're using the same type of elastic casing to secure these over the ears and fit them to the face. They're slightly narrower on the side which may, may, makes the fit even better. They sit quite nicely on the cheek. They are also slightly narrower in the width as well which all helps with that and gets a good fit across the face below the chin and above the bridge of the nose. I think these are probably going to be our most popular masks and we're going to be making them in lots of different de designs and we'll be adding in more designs as we go along. So when it arrives with you, it should look like this. It should already be packaged up in the brown bag that we want you to put the masks back into when you've completed them. There's two little handy helpers, uh, box pleat assistant number one and box pleat assistant number two. I thought you'd get a bit upset if I told you you needed to be eating more cereals and make, and make some more templates. So I have very graciously um, printed and laminated these for you and they should help enormously with the job also got a full list of instructions on how to pleat how to make the box pleat so if you're panicking at the word box pleat don't these will make it really really straightforward for you um, so you'll get your elastic they're tied around with elastic three pieces of fabric and then the amount of pipe cleaners required to complete the job if your brown bag has come with a label that's fabulous if not there should be a single label inside and as you can see all you need to do is a single row of stitching, just secure it either side. It's just stitched under the turn up, stitch in, and there you go. And that'll be ready then to go off to uh, somebody in our local community once they come back to us at the Thrive Centre. I'm showing you this one for a very particular reason. All the other ones, they're all approximately 112 centimetres wide. This one, for some crazy reason, is 160 centimetres. It's a lovely cotton cloth. Um, and it allows us to actually get two extra masks per row. So I thought I'd, I'd um, show you this one to avoid any confusion. Most of them are going to be the narrower ones, but some of them are going to be this width, which means instead of 15 out of one pack, you can actually make 21 masks. So that's really great. First job is to take it across to your sewing machine or to the overlocker if you have one. And we're just going to over edge, zigzag stitch, or overlock the long edges you don't need to do the short edges because they're self edges top tip if you're working on your overlocker you don't actually need to trim anything off this fabric it's been cut very precisely so please avoid using the cutter and just line your fabric up so that it can overlock the stick overlock the fabric but avoid trimming anything off so we've got our three lengths of fabric overlock overlock over edged on the sewing machine and I'm going to work on this one okay now we're back at the ironing board so it's going to be no shock to you that we're going to be doing some pressing next and the first job is to just press out all the packing creases okay so we've got that all pressed out and if like me you're looking at the right side of the fabric first thing you do is flip it so that you turn over and looking at the wrong side some things that you're going to need while we're working on this so you're going to need your box pleat assistant number one first of all then you're going to require box pleat assistant number two. We're going to start off using the sewing gauge and pencil and you're also going to need your template. So first of all we are going to press up a three centimetre return. So if on your sewing gauge you just mark it out at six centimetres, line up the blue or the red marker on the bottom of your fabric and just put a few pencil markers at the six centimetre mark. That'll get you going. And when we turn the bottom up, the bottom edge to match up that marker that we've just made, we know that we've got a three centimetre return. 
press that out all the way down to the bottom of your fabric. If you mark it up like that as well, it, it avoids having to keep stopping and starting and checking every time with the, uh, with the sewing gauge. I'm not going to show you all the pressing, I'm just going to show you the top end. I am going to press all the way down and you need to do that as well, every time. When you've done that, you're then going to turn under that over edged edge by about a centimetre and again you're going to press it all the way down. Just finishing the bottom end. If you prefer, use a sewing gauge, make sure that you get in a centimetre. That looks good enough to me. I'm happy with that. You can sort of use your pencil marks that you've already made. If you feel like you're about a centimetre away from those then you know you're along the right lines. Back up to the top end and now the fun begins as we start to create our pleats. You need your sewing gauge again and you're just going to now measure four centimetres up from the bottom fold. Line up your box pleat assistant number one with the edge of that and also the self edge of the fabric. You're lining up to the very edge of the laminate and just check it down at the bottom end, make sure that it's equally four centimetres away. When you're happy with that, then we're going to turn up the fabric push against the assistant and press. Now I'm just going to show you how we do it on the, on the one piece of card. What you really need to do now is move that down, line it all up again, check you're at four centimetres and go again. Then we're going to turn it over, keeping the card nice and neat and then following the instruction we press it up again and then following the instruction again we press that down. We've sort of created a little envelope with our pressing there but obviously you need to do this all the way down to the bottom so you need all of these creases in place all the way down. Just a bit of a top tip, I'm not sure how long these are going to last, it is just a piece of laminated card and the seam um, from the iron is going to have an effect at some point. So before you use them actually it might be really useful to make yourself some, you know what I'm going to say, some alternates out of cereal box or thin card if you've got them. Just bear in mind I've tried them with cereal box and they are great but they are, obviously they've got a bit of a thickness to them so that does take up some of the millimetres. Um, and your turnings but if you can make yourself duplicates and keep this as your neat copy that's a good idea I'm showing you how to use more than one at one side because we're working on this long fabric and it's easier if you have more than one because you can turn over a longer length in one go and using those two pieces of card now I can press down a much longer stretch and so using the two at a time method now, we're just going to press in the last nine centimetre fold. So there's the one that we've already done. I'm going to press this one and at the same time, you can fold down that top edge. This measurement should be three and a half centimetres if you just want to check that you're getting all the dimensions right. And you can press all those down in one go. Again, if you've got the stripy stuff, you can see if it's off kilter, so just readjust and bring it back in line. And then you need to repeat that right the way down to the bottom. Some of the cottons are crisper than others and give a really nice crease. This one's quite a soft one. So once you've taken uh, your laminated um, sheets out, it's very worthwhile just folding it all back so that you get your nine centimetre return and just pressing down the whole length. So just fold it over when you've done the top end, slide it down the ironing board, make sure it's all lined up and then press again. It really is a long length this one <laughs> for this job. But like I say, it allows us to get 21, so that's great. Okay, there we have it, that's the first bit done.
there are some uh, measurements on here which I've not made any reference to. I'm sure you've worked out that the 9 centimetre across the width is obviously the measurement that we've got in our large returns, 9 centimetres. These two are just aid memoirs. If you lay the assistant on your fabric, it's just a reminder that before the first 9 inch return, we have 7 centimetres here. In different folds, we've got 1, 2 and then 4 centimetres, which makes us up to 7 centimetres. And the other end... That return there is a three and a half centimetre. So it's just a reminder to, if you, you know, when you've got all the way through this and you just want to check everything's looking square and okay, you should have seven centimetres up to that first crease and then three and a half centimetres down from the last crease. Now we just need to flip it over so that we're looking at the right side of the fabric again and we're ready to make our box pleats. And this time we need box pleat assistant number two. And we're going to work on. We've flipped it now, so we've got the three and a half centimetre return at this end, and we're going to work on this pleat here. And you basically just set the box pleat assistant in the middle of that nine centimetre block. It needs to be in the middle. The reason that I flipped the fabric round so that we were working on the three and a half centimetre edge rather than the seven centimetre edge is I wanted to try and avoid pressing out all these creases that are in there. This way, it allows us width on this side of the iron. So hopefully we won't lose too much of those creases, which we need in a little while. Right, so we've got one and two box pleats now. Let's show you again, have it all lying flat. And when you're happy with those, they're not looking too bad. Then really give it a good bit of steam. Again, avoiding pressing out the creases we've got at the top there. And you guessed it. We need to repeat that process all the way down to the bottom. I'm just working on doing the closest pleat to me first and then I'm going to repeat with the top pleat. You just have to remember with the stripy ones you've got an advantage and a disadvantage because you've got a helper in the stripes because you can see really obviously if you've gone wonky um, but it's wider fabric so it takes a bit longer and you get a bit more drag hanging off your ironing board and potentially causing a twist so it swings and roundabouts. Also, once you've pressed in the bottom plate, it's a lot easier to press in the top plate without catching any of these creases that we don't want to press out accidentally. So when you've got your two box plates nicely in place, just tuck under that top edge and press the whole thing. Give it a really good steam right down to the bottom. So there we go, box plates all in place, looking reasonably square. I'm happy with that. So the next thing to do is to just pin those pleats in place because we don't want to lose them. Um, and you need to pin them as if you are just doing a slip stitch. So we're just gonna catch one edge of the pleat and the other edge of the pleat. We, do, we don't want the pins in the way of any of our stitching that's coming up next. If any of you like to tack, I've never really been a tacker, but if any of you like tacking, then this will be an ideal place to tack because then you're not gonna have to be dancing around your pins while we do the next little bits of stitching. So the last little bit of pressing we need to do, and it's also the last instruction on your card, is to fold the second block in half. This is the second block here, and then press. If you want to, before you actually start on your fabric, it might be worthwhile having a practice on some scrap. You just need a short strip of fabric that's 38 centimeters deep, and then you'll be able to practice running through the method using your, um, box pleat assistance and seeing how it works. It's much easier to get the hang of it on a shorter strip. In fact, I actually did my first practice on a bit of paper bag, I'll show you. So when I was just practicing and working it out, I just used a little bit of paper because it's easy to press and crease. Uh, worked it all out, small narrow strip, and, uh, and there you go. So if you want to have a practice before you start any of this, now I've undone that, I can't fold it again. <laughs> There we go, falls back in place. So last little bit then is to press the central block in half. And you're probably thinking, how on earth do we do that? Well, it's actually really easy because we're just gonna take the overedged or overlocked edge that you did earlier, and we're going to marry it up with this creased edge on the bottom. And really conveniently, that will give us a central point in that block. So you just fold it over all the way down and then press it all the way down. And that is honestly all the pressing done for this job. 